All right, today we're going to talk about the five capitals. Now, this is one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite tools that we teach. It's been really useful for me. I'm hoping it'll be useful for you. And um, Jesus uses this idea of capital a lot in the New Testament. This idea, he never says the word capital, you know, capitalism. But he talks a lot about investing. There's a lot of different places in the New Testament where Jesus talks about, in the Gospels especially, where Jesus says, like, man, this man went away and uh, he gave everybody some money to invest. Or, or you know, oh, this guy, he... He, he sold everything he had so he could invest in this one thing. This, this kind of theme plays out a lot in Jesus' teaching, where he uses capital kind of as a, he uses money as a placeholder for other things. But there's this story in Luke 16 that is very weird, and uh, it's on page 108 if you've got one of these, and I think it's easiest just to get it right out of the text. So, uh, so in Luke 16, um, if you, you know, Depending on your Bible, if you're using just like a regular Bible with subtitles, it might be called the parable of the shrewd manager or the dishonest manager. It's a really weird story because what happens is this guy steals from his master and Jesus commends him. And you're like, what, wait, wait, Jesus, what? You're like, you're, you're what? That's not, I don't think that's what you should do. You should be telling everybody this guy's awful. So Jesus says to his disciples, there's a rich man who was informed of accusations that his manager was wasting his assets. Can you believe it? So he called in the manager and said, what's this I hear about you? Turn in the account of your administration. You can no longer be my manager. And so what happens is this guy, this manager, is in a bad situation. He's about to lose his job for incompetence, basically. And, um, and what's he going to do? He's got nothing. And so the, the capital, he, he has just realized what he's saying is like, I don't have any money. I need money to have a job to live. Uh, to, I need a job to have money to live. And he says, what he's saying is, I don't have any financial capital. Now, this is where a lot of us are, right? Like you and me, if we're not comparing ourselves to, you know, the whole world or history. If we just like look around us, we're like, man, a lot of people have more financial capital than me. And a lot of us act as if this is the most important capital. The world certainly acts as if this is the most important capital. And this guy says like, man, what am I going to do? I need money. I got to get some money. Money, honey. And so he, he's just baffled. He says, I don't know. What am I going to do? What should I do since my master is taking my position away from me? What should I do? He says, I need, and, and the world has recognized that this is a thing, I need intellectual capital. I'll even put capital right here. I need intellectual capital. Now, if you're reading like Fast Company magazine or something, like they're always talking about intellectual capital, and that refers to um, companies trade secrets or especially in software it's like this is our software package that we've got it's intellectual like it's just stuff that we, we've built the software products or maybe it has to do with you know specialized processes or uh, maybe our list of clients or whatever that all that stuff is called intellectual capital and for him the plan is what he needs he's like man i need a plan <laughs> i don't know what to do i need some intellectual capital and he says I, the next he has an idea he's like oh i could dig Right? The next thing he says. But then he's like, no, actually, I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm not strong enough to dig. And he's, what he says is, I don't have physical capital. So if you went to a business school, <laughs> business, nope. What he says is, I need physical capital. Now, if you went to like a business school in the 80s, right? You got your MBA. These are the three types of capital, right? Financial capital, intellectual capital, physical capital. That makes up what your company has. That's how we tell how valuable your company is, is how much finance, financial capital, intellectual capital, and physical capital do you have? That kind of tells us your, your worth, right? Um, and that's not wrong from one way of looking at it. But, uh, but what happens here? Let's, let's look at what the, what the guy does. I'm not strong enough to dig, too ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. So that when I'm put out of management, people will welcome me into their homes. So he contacted his master's debtors one by one. He said the first, how much do you owe my master? The man said, 100 measures of olive oil. The manager said, take your bill, sit it down quickly, and write 50. Then he said to another, how much do, do you owe? 100 measures of wheat. Take your bill, write 80. So he's like cooking the books, <laughs> right? Uh, and then you're thinking, what a dishonest guy. This guy's terrible, right? He's, he's literally stealing from his master when he's not stealing exactly, embezzling uh, for his own personal gain. He's awful. 
And the manager is said, the, the, the manager said to him, take the bill. The master commended the dishonest manager because he acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their contemporaries than the people of the light. And I tell you, make friends for yourself by how you use worldly wealth so that when it runs out, you will be welcomed into the eternal homes. So what he's, what, what, what's he do, right? He says, okay, I don't have any of this stuff. <laughs> or the little bit that I have, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leverage it to build up relational capital. Relational capital. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some relational capital. And even you're starting to see this with businesses where they're like, man, our, you know, whether it's how much people like our brand or, or the relationships we have, like this is actually starting to be seen as a real thing. And, G, and the manager says, good work figuring out that this was more valuable than these things. But Jesus says, even that, that's good. But even that, above that, there's a fifth type of capital and it's spiritual capital. Spiritual capital. Now, here's the thing that's that's really. I'm going to erase this just to give clarity. I'm going to erase this, and I'm even going to erase this. All right. These five types of capitals that get talked about here, and I know, like at some level, we're reading back into the text because there was capitalism. I mean, Adam. This is pre Adam Smith, right? Nobody had written a theory of capitalism yet. But there's these these five types of capital that show up in this story. In Jesus' mind, there's a clear order in terms of importance. But what's funny is it's exactly the opposite order that the world has. All right? Because what's the world say? The world says, man, most of the time, now okay, every once in a while people are like countercultural and they think, no, relationships matter or whatever. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. But most of us live, most of the world lives as if financial capital is the most important thing. That this is the be all end all. If you don't have this, you don't have anything. That people who are you know who are rich in this, even if they're poor in all this other stuff, if they're rich in this, that's the biggest thing. But Jesus says, actually, that's the least. This is the least important thing. It's almost as if the kingdom of God flips upside down our priorities. So instead of, you know, in God's economy, instead of this being number one, this is actually number five. Right? Because this is the most important thing. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. This is really the order that you should have. All right? This, if I'm reading this right, which maybe I'm not, but if I'm reading this right, this is really the most important, the, the sequence of importance that Jesus lays out. And so if you think about it like, if you think about it like capital, like I have something to invest in all of these areas, right? God has given you five types of capital. He's, you've got financial capital. Even if you're like, man, I got nothing. I got no money, right? You've got some kind of financial capital, and it would be great to see that grow. I'm not against that. I just don't think it's as important as intellectual capital. Like the, the life of the mind is a big deal. But even that is not as important as physical capital, right? If you, and these two are close, right? I've, I actually taught this wrong for a long time that, that actually, you know, this is surprised nobody who knows me. I actually thought that what was going on in my mind was more important than my body. Like, oh, there's a, yeah. Anyway, um, you, these are close and you could argue about it, but, but really physical capital beats intellectual capital. Because if you've got a great idea and you don't have the energy or the health to execute it, like what good is your idea? All right. So financial capital is the least valuable, followed by intellectual, followed by physical. But then above that is relational capital. And above that is spiritual capital. Let me tell you something. If you are rich in these things, you are rich. All right. And so what that means is it would be worth it if you were a wise manager, if you were a wise manager of the capital that God has given you, it would be worth it to trade up. Right. It would be worth it to trade up, to trade up and to trade up. Anything that you're doing that's investing, that's moving you up the ladder is probably wise. Now, if if at some point one of these drops away, like like you get sick and your health goes, then you're probably using your financial capital to try and replace your intellectual. Try, you're probably filling in the gaps with all these things, right? So I'm not, it's no hard and fast rule. I'm not saying you shouldn't have any of this or any of this or any of this. But what I do want you to know is that, first of all, spiritual capital and financial capital are not the same thing, right? That's we call that prosperity gospel, if we think those two things are the same thing. But that this, that this order is countercultural for us. Our culture doesn't think this is 
the order, the, the value of things, but that that in many ways, in this and in many ways, the kingdom of God is countercultural. If you lived your life in such a way that you thought that the spiritual capital that you had was the most important thing, then your life would look different, and especially it would look more like Jesus's than if you live as if this is the most important thing. All right? So this is the five capitals. I hope it's helpful for you. It's been helpful for me. I'll talk to you guys soon.